Sounds good. Hey, welcome back to another Tools to Motivation live training session. We've got a another awesome guest today, but before we get there, I need to introduce my co-host, Marie Mack from Tools to Motivation. Two steps over, goes Chad, then goes Marie. <laughs> I don't know how Chad got in there because he's not even a co-host on this one. Chad, you figured out some hack. That's pretty cool. It's so funny because what you see is I'm um, two steps over, but you're right next to me. So okay, well, I don't then know. It's so the recording's go. gonna show that. <laughs> Whatever we have, it's okay. I'm great to be here. My name is Marie Mack. I am a part of the Tools for Motivation team, co-host here with Justin. You guys have seen me here. Um, every couple of weeks we come in and we bring in amazing speakers. And I'm so thankful that you're showing up live. We get a lot from you being here and I know you get to answer, get your questions answered as well. So just as a reminder, as we're doing the recording, answer, uh, pop your questions into the chat. The team is watching, we are watching. James is ready. Look at his microphones right there. Um, I'm so excited for it. Uh, we're going to get started because we've got a lot to cover today and I don't want us to delay at all. Justin, do you want to introduce our wonderful friend, James? I do. Thank so our you. guest today is James Brower and uh, quite honestly, he's awesome. He's been a member of Tools Motivation for a number of years and uh, he did an amazing favor for us by agreeing to be here today, which was not part of the plan at all. In fact, Marie and I had a meeting last week. We had this session all planned out to be something completely different. Then James came along and did a private training for the Tools to Motivation members, which is something we do every week on opposite Thursdays. So if you're not a member and wonder what we do on the other Thursdays, well, we're busy and they're doing training. And James was our guest speaker last week, delivered a session. I personally was blown away. I was literally jaw dropped. I had no clue any of the stuff he was teaching existed. Uh, I was taking notes like crazy. I was trying to learn as much as possible. Then I saw all the other members saying the same stuff. Uh, the session ended. I, I was like, Trev, please call James and ask if, he's good, if he has, has any availability next Thursday, because I'd really love to have him on. Here he is. He agreed to do it. So uh, you already saw the invite. He's going to get into some very interesting stuff about AI and PLR, specifically tools for motivation PLR content. But even if you don't have our P uh, PLR content from us, if you have any private label rights content, this will apply. And you're going to see some stuff that, again, for me, I'd never seen before last Thursday. It's probably going to be new for many of you watching here live or on the recording as well. Uh, so I definitely want to encourage those of you who, um, like Marie said, if you're here live to ask the questions, and if you are watching on the replay, we'll have a place for you in the comments below to ask questions. I know James is going to be monitoring that. We will as well. So any way possible that you're engaging with us here, please don't be shy. Ask questions. We want you to see these trainings as a way for you to get the answers that you need to advance your business. So having said all of that, Maria's talked enough. I've talked enough. James, we want to hear from you. Let's get your mic unmuted and uh, get you to take it away. All right. Well, first, thank you. And the first time I had a chance to meet Marie digitally in person. So Marie, thank you. Pleasure. Of course. Uh, great to see you. And, and for deferring the introduction because she doesn't know me and Justin barely knows me either. Uh, I was very honored to be here last week. Uh, and to get invited to somebody's house is an honor to get invited back a second time. You know, you start to think, Hey, they might actually like me. The real test is going to be, if I don't get a third down the road, then I'll know <laughs> for sure. So I've overstayed the welcome. So, but no, honestly, thank you very much. And, um, for many in, in the group here, um, or watching in the recording, uh, just a very quick kind of background. If you're kind of curious, like, well, who, why, you know, why am I positioned in this end here? Um, I think it's really important to admit I am by no means an AI expert. Um, and I don't mean to use this word. I think it's charlatan. You know, we see a lot of folks out there right now kind of throwing out their experts. Uh, come on. You know, a year ago, two years ago, most of us didn't have a clue. Um, I will admit I had been using various forms of AI tools in the education sector. That That's actually what I had done uh, professionally. And um, I started to look at ways that I could create content uh, for students, particularly, but also teachers to boost my productivity. And so this is going back two years ago, and I started to delve into tools that would allow uh, text to video. Um, Pictory was uh, one of the uh, tools that I had started using. And then all of a sudden through that circle, I realized, oh, you can do text to to just like writing things out using writer. That was one of the first tools. And then ja uh, was Jarvis, now Jasper. And about a year ago, that's when all of a sudden I had an aha moment. And, and not in a good way though. And many of you may be experiencing that already 
or are about to, as you do come to better terms to understand what is artificial intelligence. Uh, if anybody watched 60 Minutes this past weekend, awesome segment, uh, two segments, I believe they basically combined, just showing us where this is going. Without being so overly dramatic, the reality is this very well may fundamentally transform humanity in a way that perhaps we have not seen. They say this may be the greatest invention ever made by far. And it's moving so rapidly. That's the scary part. So my career started out as a special teacher, then I was an assistant principal, then a virtual school principal here in the state of Iowa. Uh, actually, 10 years ago, founded the first public school here in Iowa. So I've always kind of lived in the digital, the non-traditional. And I thought I was ready for AI since I was using these tools. And this summer, I just had a cognitive dissonance moment where I realized everything that we can currently, and this is before ChatGPT even came about, I, I started recognizing everything in the field of education that a teacher does, theoretically, a computer can do. And I started recognizing that the future of work, the future of life, the future of education, teaching, learning, wow. And uh, I went through and probably am a little bit of a midlife crisis, trying to figure out what now. I share all of this because if you at all are experiencing any emotion similarly, that's normal, it's to be expected, and it's, why wouldn't we, right? Um, but as opposed to many, particularly in my field of education, who are wanting to ban and restrict and hide from these tools, those that are going to position themselves for the true future and today, and I hope it's you and we together, we're leaning into this. We're leveraging these tools to recognize how must we reskill, upskill, and then start integrating these processes into the work we do. No industry will be left untouched on this, honestly. So uh, I really thank you for attending today and for those watching on, on there. I'll have contact information at the end. If you want to follow up, particularly with some of the pieces we'll go with, may move kind of quickly. Um, and uh, I know that we'll, we'll definitely dedicate time at the end here for Q&A and some discussion point there. So with that being said, I'm going to share a screen and I love new tools um, as best as possible. So this tool that I'm actually using is uh, called Gamma. And I believe if you go to gamma.ai, uh, this is a really cool tool. Basically, and I'm not even embellishing here, this creates, in essence, what looks like it's a PowerPoint format. Um, and all I had to do was copy and paste some information in, and it automatically created the slides, um, formatted the text where it felt it should go, and it also picked uh, images for me. So uh, this took me, uh, actually, I'll show you what I'll be kind of running through a little bit today. This took me all of 30 seconds, 40 seconds to put together, which is, again, going back to just amazing how these technologies can assist us. Now, I did have to put human touch to it and edit things and move things around. And that's going to be the important piece of today. AI is not going to necessarily replace us. I assume not anyhow. It's going to work with us and it will be even more empowered because of the human touch, just like our productivity will be enhanced by the AI touch. So I see this as it's a dual outlet. We need each other. It really is um, a true relationship here. So uh, that's that's kind of the purpose for today. And uh, basically, if I got you motivated already, great. If not, I'll get you there, I promise, for sure. So very quickly here, if, if you're still not familiar with ChatGPT, uh, which is owned by OpenAI, uh, and they've been working on this for many, many, many years, and finally was released this year. They felt that they needed to get something out because they knew that it was going to rock our world so much. They felt, let's just give it to the people, let them start to learn it, understand more things about it. And the idea was that, like many of us who were experiencing that dissonance, we could start to, to feel more comfortable over time. Uh, it iterated pretty quickly. About a year ago, there was still only GPT-3. We don't even know what GPT stands for and such, but in a nutshell, it was trained. It took information. It was trained to look for patterns of words, and it can then predict what based on its training, believes that the person is going to want next. So a year ago, we were still working on GPT-3, and it was pretty good. You could take some text and then say, 
you know, turn this into, um, uh, give me a summary of the information. It was able to do that pretty well. Uh, then came 3.5, and then all of a sudden it started to actually, or, or I should say three, and then into 3.5, it was started to do better writing for us. And that's what we're now familiar with. That was kind of the big rollout that occurred in late November, where if you were to go to ChatGPT, you are basically having a conversation and it's generating text for you. It's taking information that it had learned and it's connecting all of these dots and, and then predicting for you what it thinks you want to see. Sometimes it's fantastically spooky how, how accurate it can be. And then other, other times it's literally making information up because it is not a research tool. It's predicting what it believes based on how it's trained, it's going to share out. So if you ever hear the word hallucination, and we may even see it today, sometimes it just gives you something that's not accurate. That's called hallucination, basically. Um, and it's a very cool tool. And then came chat GPT-4 uh, that was released mid-March. Uh, that's what I'll be using today for those that have upgraded to the, plur, the pro or the plus version, you have GPT-4. If not, it's totally fine. You don't need to have four. Um, you'll see how it could be beneficial. Um, and perhaps those of you who have never used ChatGPT today, you may definitely become a believer and see, wow, yeah, I could actually use this quite well. Um, I've already shared you know, a little bit of that pitch here. I'm not an advocate or an evangelist for AI per se, but it I see the I see the upside, not the downside. And um, it's one of these cases where I've I've said with my colleagues in the education arena, I don't think that the conversation more needs to be, should we ban it? That that's to me, it's counterproductive. It's here and it's not going to be changed and it doesn't appear to be regulated anytime soon. So we really do need to learn, as I said, to lean in how to leverage it. And therefore, you really want to be a fast mover on this because this gives us an opportunity to position a company, gain a competitive advantage. And honestly, other than the uh, the rollout of the internet access to folks, this is one of the cases where from an equity standpoint, one person business can now compete, perhaps even outperform a mid-size, a moderate size, or even a large size business. The tools are there. The access of information that we now have, the tools that we can do with that information, the way we could code, we could write, copy, we could create marketing, we could create email campaigns. We're able to do what traditionally had been an entire firm or an entire department. And we could do this now as one person. The better we equip ourselves for this, the better we are positioning ourselves to truly dominate the market as best we can. So there's no doubt about it. From a business standpoint, this is so wise and smart for all of us. And I use this, this phrase here, the future is yesterday. Kind of like a Yogi Bearism, like it doesn't really make sense. But when we think about it, everything that we thought as we were growing up and we assumed, oh, AI, AI, yeah, one day when the robots take over, we were thinking, well, most of us, anyway, 2050, 2075, the 2100s. And then just within a year, even, we started to realize they're speeding up the fact that they're even suggesting singularity. When can a computer outperform a human or when can a computer perform and you can't tell, did a human do that or did the computer do that? There was talk that that would have been still 50 years out. And then a few months ago, they said, well, you know, maybe within the decade, and then about two months ago, some have already suggested, perhaps by the end of this year, we could hit singularity with some of these technology. I can't give a plea enough to indicate the future is yesterday. And therefore, we also have to be prepared for whatever rules existed, models, frameworks. Those were created for a, a specific time and a separate set of conditions that just don't exist anymore. So. It's scary and exciting at the same time. And so what we're going to see today is probably going to become the norm. And it's weird for me to think that I'm going to kind of show, here's how I do these processes. but And yet this could probably be counterplay for us all within a year, if not even sooner. So let's get into it for sure. Um, what, what, what the real purpose today is going to be is kind of twofold for me. Um, I want to show how using ChatGPT, 
we could start to really hone in on who is our customer. And many of those that are in here, according to what I've learned from Marie and Justin, coaches, trainers, speakers, educators, um, uh, online business owners, you know, anybody that's working with somebody can benefit from this. And there's no doubt about it. We probably know our customers, particularly if you're using data analytics, you've had conversation and sessions, you, you have a pretty good feel. But sometimes we want to get even a little bit deeper because this is like a second brain for us. Then there are pieces we miss or the inferences or the analysis we want to make. It does a pretty darn good job. And it can start to give us a really complete picture to then allow us to know, really, who is our client? Who is the customer? What do they typically fear? What are they really emotionally like in their underlying means who who is it normally and that helps you from a marketing angle but then also to take content that as we know plr being a little bit more generic now you can customize and tailor specifically for and i'm going to walk through uh, that procedure that process basically that uh, that i use and we're going to do that right now so this is my layout in GPT, I'm going to increase my screen size too, so that hopefully it's a little bit easier to see. Yours may not look like mine, and that's because I have, uh, I'm going to call it an extension, AIPRM. It's very cool. Um, I'll talk about this maybe later. Um, we don't need it for today. But if you're wondering why mine looks like this, uh, it's different. And in essence, you can use prompts that other people have created, or you could save your own. Uh, like I have a tab here for newsletters. I actually create prompts and I save them there so I can use them in the future. Um, you could see why there'd be a purpose for this after today's presentation. So, and up here, if you are not familiar, you may have this ability if you've subscribed upward uh, uh, in your, excuse me, the plus or the pro, uh, you can choose between default 3.5, the legacy or GPT-4. I'm going to be using GPT-4. One quick note for those that may think about upgrading. It is beneficial. I'm not going to lie. I think that while you'll see it maybe a little bit slower in creating content, it is pretty darn thorough and they do a really good job of creating output, but you are restricted to 25 messages, 25 prompts that you give it within a three hour time frame. So I've made sure not to use GPT-4 this morning. Uh, and so I should have all my stuff ready. Um, and I've also sped this up a little bit by copying and pasting my uh prompts that I'll use today in a sheet. Um, at the end of the presentation, I'll have a an offer that you could, not no sales offer, don't worry, um, but you can get a download of the specific talking points of today, as well as the prompts I'm going to use as well. So if you like these and you want to get something even deeper, definitely stick around there for that end and uh, you, you could see the, uh, the actual language that I'm using here. So what we're going to do first is I want to dig into a user persona. I want to know a little bit more about generically, more at a macro level, who, who is it that I, I'm wanting to, to serve? And so what I'm going to do is copy and paste, as I mentioned, for sake of time. This James, can I ask a super fast question? Just yeah, absolutely. Kind absolutely. Of, um, in the chat, they're asking, are you currently, are you showing us the paid version or an unpaid version? Just so this our would mind be, is in the right space. This is paid. This is the paid version. Okay. Good, 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 the good I know you said, I know you said you can switch back and forth. 3.5 is not a paid version. You can go to four. That's right. So just D as you're asking in there and probably other people are wondering, our example is going to be for the paid version, but you can still do the same things inside the unpaid version. Okay. Yes. Just quick clarification. No, I'm glad, paid. glad you saw that, especially for anybody not familiar with ChatGPT, for sure. Please do. We'll try to answer these questions as we go as well. No, no better time, right? Than live. Yeah. So I try to increase my screen size. There used to be a belief that the prompt should be very small, just like, you know, help me understand my customer. That's pretty good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It'll give you pretty good information. But the more you can refine, the more you can give a context, and the more specific you could drive the tool to know what it is that you would like, it knows or better knows what it should offer. Remember, it was trained, it's predicting. So the more we're giving it to work with as a context, it's going to give you an output. So in this case, I, I'm making this up here, by the way, I'm not a life coach, but some are in here. So you may 
come up with something similar to saying, I'm a life coach and I provide digital product services. Now I put this in a bracket because I'm going to define that later, but I put target customer niche. And then I wanted to have more information too. I've recently purchased PLR content. I want to customize this. So that's what we're calling the background. We want to, we wanted to give it some background. Then I'm going to move toward starting to tell what I'm expecting it to do. So I'm now going to refine this a little bit more. I'm going to say now to do so, to customize this, we're going to undergo a series of frameworks so that I could better understand the pain points, the challenges, the obstacles, desires. You could fill in any words you want. You don't have to use that many. I tend to, so that we could tailor the content for the benefit. So I have a background. I have what my intent is, what my desire of this prompt is going to be. And then I did go and define who the target niche is. Niche, niche, however you say it. Um, for the sake of this, and I've run this through once just to make sure that this works, I think I'll get some, some decent content out of here. If you're a life coach and maybe you specialize in helping mothers, um, I went with a single a, a segment of single mothers who work full-time and have young children, bless their hearts for sure. Um, so that's going to be, and I defined my target niche is, and that's important because up here I was saying, I want you to do this for target niche. Oh boy. I have to hit that back button. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to come to the task. So now I'm going to say your task is to, to conduct a user persona. This is a framework I took from Harvard Innovation Lab. And this will be for that target segment. To conduct the analysis, would you please answer these questions? And I copied and pasted a series of questions that are used as a part of a user persona framework. I'm doing this because I want to collect as much information as possible. I don't know what it's going to provide me. I don't have a hypothesis. I'm not really guessing. I'm just going to watch and see. And then I did this because some of you may be like me. Words are great, but sometimes I like it visually too. So I said to help visualize your thorough analysis, please format the findings into written format and then a table. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and copy this entire prompt back into ChatGPT. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. Um, one thing that is cool, by the way, I don't want to confuse folks. Up here, if you have, I don't remember if this is in the regular chat GPT or if this is because of AIPRM, you can change your tone and you could change your writing style. I'm just going to go with the regular standard. I'm not going to do anything special here. Um, I couldn't remember if everybody has access to tone and writing style or not. So I just copy and pasted that prompt. And let's see now what it starts to come up with for us. And so as this is kind of populating here, we're gonna take all this information and how are we gonna use it? Like, what is our thought process here? And maybe you're gonna get to this. I'm just thinking like, I'm watching all this happen in front of me. And, and it's absolutely insane. <laughs> of course, it's like, I mean, this is, I like I, I just don't have words and same thing when like Chad did this whole thing it's just like holy moly this would have taken me literally months like this is not how my brain works it takes me forever to do research especially a table like I am just blown away and so then I think about great what can we do with it and how right. should I use it in my business you know that's it's, so it, yeah so these are gonna all these prompts are gonna actually build upon each other this is what I'm doing at this stage here and the way my brain is working on this, I'm setting, I have to close my eyes here as I'm thinking to get in my brain. Um, I'm looking at this as setting a foundation um, because let me go to the end goal and then first. So I have an article I already pulled from our T uh, Tools for Motivation uh, product. And it was an article that had to deal with like 10 steps that, that blah, 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 blah. So that's my end goal. But that particular article, actually, Marie, I'm glad you said this. Thank you. Let's go to the end first for a moment here. Why? Why am I going to do all of this here? Well, I buy $100 worth of TFM per month. And Justin could detest to this at the end here. High percentage of folks traditionally do not use the PLR that they buy. So in essence, we're kind of wasting our own resources. 
And I started to tell myself, how can I do this? How can I do this very methodically? Because just as Marie said, I am not smart. Well, excuse me, I won't speak for Marie. I am not smart enough to be able to come up with 20 different versions for 20 different people. I was looking for a way to automate this. And we know that we don't want to run the same article anyway for PLR, because then we all have the same article. And that's not going to do anybody any good unless you're giving it to an individual person. So I started to recognize I have a few different people that I serve, particularly, say, in the education arena, and maybe I'm working with students, and I would like something geared just directly for them. Or in this case, maybe I do offer counseling services or some sort of coaching service for single moms. And I'm running out of ideas, but I got this great article that was written by Tools for Motivation. How can I make it even better for them? So now, knowing that that's my end goal, what I'm starting with here from a business perspective is how can I make sure I'm not wasting my money and resources? And how can I make sure ultimately the customer wins now? And so I want to know as much as I can about that individual. Yes, you could sit down with them. You could kind of go through these questions as I just did. But I want to know, I can't do that with 50,000 or five. It's not scalable. So what I want to know first is set a foundation. Who is this likely for? so that I can inevitably customize my content, my email, my social media. And you'll see as I go through all these steps here, what this is, to, and I'm not going to go through each of these lines because it doesn't matter right now, but it's telling me that it's probably 25, 45, it probably makes sense. They already have children, they're working full time. So um, kind of give me an idea of income. Now, again, this isn't so much for me as it's going to be for ChatGPT when I ask it to start repurposing content for me. Uh, we see that there's probably high school diploma. Um, I love this one right here. What is their main stress? Well, if you're a coach, a trainer, a writer, an author, a speaker, if you want to know a little bit more, according to what this analysis is so far, they have a difficult time balancing work life, probably some financial concerns, some child care, limited time. And then it's going to give me some more of the challenges. I like this too. What do they aspire to? And we're not trying to do this in a neural marketing in a dirty way. We just want to know, okay, here's their pain point. What is their life desire? And if we could try to take our content now, help them overcome what their pain points actually really are and start to guide them aspirationally to where they want to go, this content we just purchased from Tools for Motivation has just become so unbelievably strategic for that client that I could not do that, you know, single-handedly for sure. It's also gaining now what could be some of the values and beliefs, which I may not know, or maybe I do again, um, where does that person typically do their communication? What are the factors that might purchase their decision? Because maybe you're maybe you're trying to sell an ebook. So you would want to know that price is going to be something fresh in their mind. Uh, they want something that's time saving, compatible with their family needs. Okay, great. So and then it put into a table. Now, typically so what I do, done, let me just kind of come yep. back to this because I'm learning. I, I didn't see you last week, so I'm here learning with everybody else. Um, biggest thing is we're putting all of our pieces that we need, right? Like we have our PLR. We now have a demographic of a person that is our ideal client. So we have our pieces and we can put all these things together. And that's what you're showing us, right? Basically. Yes. Yep. Yes. You're, you're I love it. Reverse, I guess you could say engineering or reverse engineering. Yeah. Who, who? Well, we're being just smart business owners, right? Like it's our job as business owners to take our clients, our customers on a journey. And we can only do that if we know who those people are. Right. That's right. And so that's exactly what you're showing us is how to take PLR, how to take our customer journey and do the very best because that's, what's actually going to sell your stuff. I know Justin does this a ton with a uh, TFM, you know, he's always looking at how people are going to interact with our products and how it's best going to serve them. And we have to be able to adjust that. So absolutely That's love right. it. Sorry for the recap, but no, I'm no, like, no, no, this is good. This is as I'm here in this. Okay. This is extreme because others have that same question. I know, I know it. I know it. It's you're helping me connect these here. Awesome. So now I'm going to run another framework that gave me a user persona kind of gave me a, just a little background, but I like going a little bit deeper. I, I and, and that's my thing here. If this tool is going to work with us and be a second brain, I want it to, I'm going to work this thing. I want to get as much as I can out of it so I can make the most customizable content and you'll see why this may be beneficial. So now I'm going to run through what's called a customer empathy framework. I'd never heard about this until before. And when I go to give this prompt and notice I gave it some 
some positive reinforcement. I'm going to say to ChatGPT, excellent analysis, great job. Or it may may fall in short. Maybe it end up giving you something that's too vague. And I've actually written before to say, you're getting closer, you're on the right track, but that was very generic. I need you to go way deeper, way more thorough, be more comprehensive. But in this case, I'm going to pretend I was very pleased. Excellent analysis. You know, it's got to love you back and you got to love it. So um, now I want to know more specifics though about that target customer that I'm aiming for. What are their thoughts? What are their feelings? What are the actions? What are the things that they do? And then I'm making it clear, this is going to help us so that we can create content aligned to their actual needs. So that's some background. Now, again, the task, the task is do the map, do the empathy map answering these questions. And then I wrote out the questions here. And then one more time, I said, could you write it out and put it in a table? That's basically what I've done here in this long prompt. So now I'm going to copy and paste. And again, hey, you will have access. Yes, sir. Hey, James, sorry to interrupt. I've, I've seen a few people it might be getting confusing for some folks, especially yes, on the recording. Um, you got ChatGPT running. You have a little thing that pops up saying, uh, ask Jasper, and I think possibly even Grammarly. So oh. <laughs> yeah, could you just quickly comment on the different tools and just kind of make sure people understand? I think the main thing people need to know is you're 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 working chat GPT right now. That's what yes. you're showing, yeah. but you do happen yeah. to have some other tools, maybe with <laughs> plugins running in your browser. Right. Yeah. It, my, my computer's a mess. And of course, my world, I'm used to it. I don't even see it. I didn't even know I had Grammarly running here. Yes, I'm I am literally doing only chat GPT. Um, but yeah, as I copy and paste certain things, other stuff comes. I, I should have disabled. You can that, ignore so. those things. It's yes, like, yeah, please do. Order. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks. So we're gonna uh, copy and paste this. And back to chat GPT now. And here's what I love about this. When I go and ask this next prompt here, it's not going to forget about all of this information. As a matter of fact, I think it re remembers up to, I don't know, 10, 15, 20,000 characters. It, it really goes far back. So it's going to continue to build on itself now. And so I'm going to copy and paste this new prompt because I want to know more deeper about them. Hit enter. Of course. Let me uh, refresh my screen here. I like how it it prompts me. Are you human? You know, I was just going to say that. that the AI is asking you if you're yeah. human. That's yeah, I'm nice. sorry. I find well, it the, the irony in all this. <laughs> so I'm okay. going to paste my prompt back in. There we go. Okay, and again, it's going to start to do its thing. So it it's now starting to drill down a little bit more clearly for me. So it's a career focused single mother. We're still looking at the demographic information, starting to drill down a little bit more that their specific need, they need reliable childcare, manage their time, self-care. They want to advance their careers. We see what the emotional states are that they may experience. We see what the pain points are. A lot of these are consistent with the previous prompt, but it's starting to build on itself a little bit more. Which, if you continue to see the trends, the repeat, that's good, because that means that you're definitely finding something consistent. It's not hallucinating. And as it starts to find something a little bit new, that's because this was a newer type of a prompt to get into that person's head as best as possible. Um, and we had a good comment from Steven saying that uh, ChatGPT remembers what you ask it. And its own answer. So you can refer to that body of work in future prompts without retyping it all. That's yes, which is awesome. Can I ask uh, another question about that? Just as we're, because yep, that's yep. right on the same line as, as like, how long did it take you to train your chat? I mean, we're training, right? A program to think like, how long did it take you? Like if I'm brand new to chat GPT, how long is it going to take me to be like, okay, yes, it's coming up with my tone or it's coming up with my, what I'm looking for. Cause we have to adjust as, because some things, like you said, we're, we are the human that has to say, yes, this is okay to put in front of people. That's So that's a really good question. What's interesting about this is we are training it in the moment, in essence. That's why in the prompts that I've been sharing here, they're huge. They're, they're very long. I'm giving background context, then the task itself, and then the questions. So really, the more specific I can be in that prompt at that one moment, the better it will start to then give me what I'm looking for. Um, you, 
you wouldn't necessarily be able to come on seven days later and then say, hey, remember we spoke about, can you tell, it won't, it will either be in a new history or it won't be able to go back and refer to that conversation. This chat GPT, um, it's not there yet. Some programs okay. do that. So I, I, that's why my prompts are so extensive. I'm trying to train it at the moment by Got reminding it. it and giving it background here. And okay, actually that's, helpful. that's another thing I'm doing as well. I'm glad you brought that up by repeating some of these tasks. I'm keeping it fresh on its mind so that as we start to drill this down in just a few more steps, it's not losing track of information. It's, it's keeping track of things. I, I may have gone overboard on this second phase here, the second step, but it's at least giving me an idea still of uh, where I was getting at with this pain points, what they're looking for. I really like this table now. This is saying based on what those persons needs, wants their lifestyles are, how would they maybe access information or who are their supports? What are they looking for? And what is their motivation for help? This is kind of drilling it down a little bit closer now. So I'm going to go back to my prompt sheet and I'm going to ask it one more time now to please create a table to organize the information. And I've done that part in those two original steps, but I'm going to ask now so that we don't lose sight of these last two steps. Sorry if this is confusing there, excuse me. What I'm basically asking it to do is we just got a lot of information in step one and step two. Can you put it together for me now? Combine them and start getting rid of the redundancy, get rid of, of the overlap. And that's what it's doing right now. You don't have to do this. I'm just showing how I really go from beginning all the way to end to ensure that I'm getting as thorough and comprehensive as possible of information out of the client, the customer. I will then use this, as I said, either customized content, or if I'm creating an email campaign that I know I'm about to roll out, if I'm going to do a webinar, if I'm starting to create marketing copy that I need to be able to relate to that target customer immediately or come up with specific keywords or those thought processes so that there's a, an emotional connection. Um, I, I need to know as much as I can since the tool can actually help me do that in a sense. So that's I'm just running through one more time here to ask it now combine all steps one and two. As it's doing that, now we're going to do one more step and then you'll see customizing time here. So now I'm going to ask it to do a pain gain map. And in this case here, I first I had the user persona. Tell me about the person. Tell me about who they are demographically. Where do they possibly live? How do they work? What do they do? What do they like? Then the next piece is what are their thoughts? What are their feelings? What are their life desires? Now I'm going to get to the specific pain and then the gain. Because once then I have the macro and starting to come down to the micro, what is the specific problem that they want solved? And that's where I come in as a business owner now. It is my role to create that solution. And that's where we have the opportunity for a product or a service. So I'm going to copy and paste this prompt to now tell me for sure pain and gain based on this particular target segment. So again, I kept seeing affordable and reliable childcare. Time management continues to pop up quite a bit. Juggling family and work. Overwhelmed by financial. And of course, for some of us, we're like, yeah, I know. That probably makes sense. But at least it, it's rolling it out for us in, in a report type, type format here. Uh, difficulty maintaining social life. I don't recall seeing that one earlier bouncing the career goals, and then the gains, stronger social connection. So that's kind of a newer one. Um, and so then I've asked it to put it into a, a table for me. And so these pains, this is, this is what I start to look at. I'm looking at these pains to try to see whatever my content is or whatever I'm about to develop and create. Can I somehow help that person overcome these pains so that they're moving over here to the gains? And if I can do that with the content or if I can do that with the service I'm going to provide and promise, then I will deliver that. Now I know specifically what the, the target customer is going to want. And so now comes time to, oh, excuse me, I, I'm going to do just one more here of 
asking it now comprehensively, put it all together. We did three steps, user persona. We did the underlying feelings and thoughts, emotions, and I did pain gain. So I'm asking it now, put it all together, all together now, all three of these areas here. So this is going to give me a pretty final, here's my target segment, 25 to 45 year old, 30 to 80,000 high school diploma, maybe a bachelor's. Here are their fa uh, values. Here's their emotion overall. Here's their challenges and pains officially, officially gains and solutions. So what it is that they need. And here's where they likely communicate or where they likely engage. This is what's going to help them decide if they're going to make a product and then it's going to go into a table format. So with that, I know that seemed longer or maybe confusing, but those three steps, you could actually do one or two only. That gave you all you need comprehensively now to tell ChatGPT, awesome. Now you know who I'm working with. Now you know who you're going to gear this particular content for. So I took an article, as I mentioned, from uh, a recent, well, maybe within the year. This was from a full uh, package, a tool for motivation, full package, full product. And I took it inside one of the uh, one of the reports, I took a single article for us to use. And so, and it was titled seven things to realize about the dangers of overthinking. And I just picked one random. So I'm going to take this article and I want to customize it for the audience, the single mother with children working full time. So I'm going to now prompt chat GPT. Hey, again, excellent work. Now we're going to start customizing. Your task is Review the PLR content, identify which pieces are most relevant to the pain points and the needs of the target customer segment. Create new headlines, subheadings, and calls to action that specifically address the pain points and the needs of the target customer segment. Edit the content, remove any irrelevant information, and add new information that specifically addresses the pain points and needs of your customer. Going back to Marie's original question, after we, it was we were doing the step one, this is why we went through those three steps. So that now when I say write an article specific to the target audience, you could have easily skipped step one, two, three, and you could have just said, hey, ChatGPT, Take this article and please rewrite it so it's relevant and important to single moms who work full-time with kids. And it would have done that for sure. But if we're really going to tap into and leverage these to give you a competitive advantage over any other provider or client or coach, excuse me, or business, let's go all out. Let's, let's use the technology that's there, learn how to use it, and let's just kick some butt with it. So that's the prompt. So I'm going to copy and paste this whole thing including the actual copy of the article from Tools for Motivation. So copy, I go back into my chat GPT. And again, the beauty is it's going to recall basically everything that it has generated. That's why I asked it to keep summarizing. It's definitely going to remember now what it's supposed to be customizing. I hit enter. And now this is where the magic comes in. So all of these pieces confused you before, fine. This is this is what you're actually here for. So it just changed. It, it totally redid the title. Seven tips to overcome overthinking and achieve work lifestyle balance or work life balance for busy single moms. So customize it to to the person. Came up with a brand new introduction. I'm already seeing single mom working. It's talking. It touched those pain points there. It's overwhelming. You're balancing responsibilities. Has a subheading that might have been from, or it was the original, and it just reworded it. Instead of recognize dangers, dangers of overthinking, it's now the impact of overthinking on your well-being and work-life balance. And it's telling me that here's where it revised the content. I, for me, I just like, just like Marie said, even still, my mind just gets blown away. I've been using these tools for a while. And the amount of time that this just saved me, even if you didn't want to do steps one, two, and three, but if you chose to do steps one, two, and three, and you start to get it down, just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. That's what it starts to come to at the end there. And then you put in your article. This, this whole process here would generally take me three minutes altogether. So I have a brand new article customized for this particular target segment that was cranked out in three to five minutes maximum. 
Whereas we know typically, no way. Now, yes, you want to edit it. You want to take a look at it. You know, and that that's, there's still a human touch. You still want to ensure that that piece there, especially when we're dealing with topics that are, you know, these are people's livelihood. So you do want to ensure that there's integrity and ethics involved in this. But from a output standpoint, just showing how amazing we can we can do this. Um, you'll notice, by the way, for those that are not familiar with ChatGPT, it's stop mid-sentence. And what I can do is I just click continue, and then it will automatically type continue writing, please, and it will pick up right where it left off. And that's why you'll hear people say, yeah, I can write a book with ChatGPT. Like how? This is actually how you're you're really using your prompts to instruct it, train it, and then keep kind of working off of it by reviewing information with it. And then it just keeps cranking things out, which is incredible. So we now have a brand new article completely. Oh, look at this. I even had a call to action here. Join our supportive community, our supportive community of single moms, share your experience. So if you had that, or you could ask to change that. Now, for the sake of time, I just want to show just two more steps, three more steps of what you can then do with this too, in case you're curious, like, okay, that's an article, but I don't do articles. That's fine. You know, maybe you wanted the article to then be the catalyst for a new lead magnet. So I created a prompt here to tell ChatGPT, create new lead magnets related to this updated PLR content, such as checklists or guides that specifically address the pain points and needs of your customer. I don't know about you. I love when I get my tools for motivation each week. I, I like the tips reports I, and I use them. I actually, I think that's why I buy the products. I use this for me. I, you know, I really enjoy it. But how could you take a, a, a top 10 tips report for the audience of single moms? Again, I'm dealing with somebody's livelihood. So I don't feel comfortable writing it out myself. And if I go do the research and I do it truly methodically, like it's going to take me some time. You just saw we have a brand new article. I'm going to copy and paste this prompt. I'm going to put it back into ChatGPT. I have no idea what it's going to give me as output here, but it gave me the idea of a new lead magnet that could be the busy single mom self-care checklist. It's giving me the description of what it would be. So it would be a checklist for helping the busy single mom prioritize their well-being amidst the chaos of daily life. And it, Here's what I'm going to do. For the sake of time, I'm going to just copy and paste. Let's pretend like I fell in love with this idea. I'm like, oh, that's a good one. So I'm going to say, that was great. Now create the actual checklist with, did it say, give a number? I'm just going to do five for the sake of time with five um, items on the checklist. Um, make it super helpful, high value, and uh, applicable for the customer. I don't know. I'm just making this up and I just want to see if it will start to, oh, it's probably still writing over here. Okay. Now I'm going to hit enter. I want to see if it will, oh, I didn't give the exact one, but okay. So it's going to go ahead and it just picked one because I didn't specify which one I wanted. So it's now creating the checklist for me. And really, I, and I'm showing this, I don't want Justin getting worried here. I'm not trying to show by any means how you can just basically run your own tools for motivation. That's it. It would behoove me right now to make very clear part of the value that tools for motivation brings is that the writers on the back end and the team members have already done the professional side of the work, the research side of it to ensure that the product that we're getting is proper, correct, you know, and well-written and such. Um, what I appreciate about it is that is then my starting point. That's my template to give me ideas for how I want to customize for the individual person. Um, there's a time and a value. You can, I suppose, you know, start to create your own content from scratch, but there is there is plenty of time to do it proper and right. I see this not ever, I don't see AI as replacing my work. I see it as making it, it's enhancing it. And I don't see me not needing tools for motivation anytime soon because they're giving me the skeleton so that I can enhance it. Then I use AI to really double down, enhance it. So it's like they're giving me a raw product and I'm making it stronger than what it already is. So I and I believe that Justin would appreciate me saying that for sure. It's just a way to really customize this thing down. So now I have a new checklist. 
a brand new checklist that I could send to that individual person. Um, maybe you do give client services or you wanted to come up with a bonus for that one person because something happened. I don't know. The computer went down and they didn't get something and you're like, I, I'll make it up to them. Okay, here, here's a customized checklist just for you, literally just for you. Nobody else has this. We'll do one more here. And then that's, uh, oh, two, excuse me. Um, then I'm going to say, all right, now with that, create some social media posts for me. And it will start to give me the new caption um, and then give me the copy. So maybe this is for, I guess that could probably be for Facebook, maybe. Uh, you And you could specify, you could say, give me, uh, now, now create three social media posts, one for LinkedIn, one as a Twitter thread, please make it long, at least five to like be specific with the prompt and it will start creating social media for you. And again, the best part about this is the whole point of today's presentation is that this was all drilled down for that customer. We took a great product created by Tools for Motivation. You drilled down with that specific target niche. You started thinking about the pains, the gains. What does that person need? And why do they now need you versus anybody else? Well, because you're going to solve the problem. You're going to get better close to making them feel as if they can overcome because you've done such strategic alignment of the products that you can offer versus what they really need. And you're seeing firsthand how that can actually be done. It's not, this isn't hyperbole anymore. This isn't just false promises. This is truly there. One last one, and then it'll be, uh, we'll open up for question discussion and such. Email campaign. Um, maybe, I, oh, I'm so bad about email newsletters and such. So what can it do for that? Well, here's a subject line. Actually, I didn't know what it was going to create here. I just wrote this last second here. So here's a subject line. Discover the secret to overcoming overthinking as busy single mom. So maybe you have that as a segmentation in your email list. Um, gives it a little preview there. It's giving the, yeah, basically giving the text for what would go into the email. Uh, you have the, the new article or the new guide or the new checklist that you just created. And it just customized an email campaign for that segment. Um, there are so many things you can do. And we went, yes, we went a little bit deeper than we needed to perhaps with the user persona and the demographic and, and such. But I wanted to show that the, the more we can train, the more we can inform JetGPT of who it is we're writing for, here's the raw article, now put it all together. And then the very last thing, maybe I'll save this for a different day, you can then start taking one article Combine it with the second article by giving it a prompt to say, here's article one, here's article two. Can you please take the best of these two ideas and put it together into a whole action report and guide based on, and then it's just, there are so many things and this is just the writing part. So I'm going to pause and take a drink of water. Uh, Marie, I'm going to come <laughs> wow. you for a second. This is and uh, Yeah. Yeah. I'm so thankful too. I'm sorry, Justin. I don't want to cut you off. If you have no, I was just saying he take an, an an entire liter of water if you need because I was <laughs> <laughs> need some water to cool down the chat too. It's going nuts. Yeah. Well, I love it. Yeah, everything in the chat. This is amazing. I mean, completely crazy. Thank you so much for like going through the steps with us. Um, as a reminder, we will have this. Um, I'll pop that. Is it a good time to put your link in the chat, James? Maybe. Sure. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll pop that in there in just a second. Um, as a reminder, we're, this is recording. If you came in, because we saw people at, throughout the call, we just got more and more people coming on. Um, we have all this recording. We're going to put it all together. And um, James is giving us these prompts too. So your task, of course, is to go out there and practice this. Make this happen for your business. Grab your latest PLR from Tools for Motivation and go make it happen, right? Like use this in your business. We just gave you an exact example, which is amazing. Um, I'm going to go grab that link. Justin, did you see any specific questions in the chat? I know Chad has been on fire there. He's been answering questions. Thank you, Chad, again, as always. Um, anything else we need to bring up to James, though, Justin, as we're kind of well, I'll yeah, grab I, that link. Yeah, while you're grabbing that, Maria, I guess just James, so you're kind of up to speed. While you were going through it, there was tons of questions coming in. A lot of a lot of wows and the the mind blown emojis and things of that nature. Um, some some things that got a little bit more into details, like which tool are using, so on and so forth. Uh, well, I, personally, I think we're at the point now where if I were to try to scroll back and read them all, it might get a little messy. So what I'm thinking we should do here, Marie grabs that link. 
is, uh, oh, she's already starting to put it in there, um, is if you have a burning question that maybe didn't get answered, because I think you did answer some of them, James. So they kind of came up and you would go through and they, we hit it. So if you had a question that didn't get answered, put it in the chat now, because I'm kind of looking at, for those of you in the recording, this won't make sense, but it's 1.55 p.m. Eastern right now. Put it in the chat and I'll kind of look from this moment forward and you can follow along too, James, and we can kind of hit one question at a time. So for example, um, yeah, let's go here. Let's start with Tripp's question. I'm going to read it out, out loud. And James, if you want to unmute, you can just jump in as you see fit. Uh, when creating the customer profile, is there is there a way to reverse engineer in order to actually find out who our platform is best for? There is, and and that'll be. Of course, I didn't want to get too 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 deep here. There definitely is. Um, when creating a startup, there's a whole nother set of frameworks, kind of to go that route as well. Um, and I'm going to start doing some YouTube videos to break that down. Um, that's how I just started to come up with kind of a business opportunity that I want to pursue. And I did exactly that process. So it is possible for sure. Absolutely. By the way, somebody asked, I think it was Deb. Deb Martin asked about Gamma. Gamma was just, sorry, I threw that out in case. I like sharing tools. Um, Gamma was, I used Gamma as an AI driven PowerPoint creator. That's all. It was just a tool I used. And if anybody liked that layout versus uh, PowerPoint, I go for it. It's free. That's why I used it. And uh, I just copied and pasted my text and it created an entire PowerPoint presentation for me in about 45 seconds, which was incredible. <laughs> so I figured if that was that cool for me, some of you may love that also. So that's why I shared Gamma. And then Marie, I see you've popped the uh, the link in there. James, can you quit? I, we're going to go through questions. Can you quickly just touch on what that download will include? Yeah, the it's uh, I don't have it up in front of me here. Basically, it's it's a walkthrough of everything that we just did here in terms of like the why. So it, it's yeah. to help understand, gave some much more clear, understandable prompts. And then I will share the actual prompts I did for this presentation as well. So I made sure Justin, I think, saw a copy this morning. It's in more of an ebook format and it just much hopefully easier to understand. It yeah, shouldn't perfect. over it shouldn't overwhelm. Just yeah, click the link there. We'll put it in a few more times. Sign up for James's list. You just confirm. As soon as you click confirm, it opens right to the PDF. It's very quick. And then save that somewhere to your hard drive so you can go back to it. Um, or you can put it in the cloud, but have it handy because again, if you want to watch this replay back and try, maybe pause it and try some of the stuff for your own world, and it's kind of overwhelming for you, that would be the, the two best tools, the replay plus James's gift here or his download. So, uh, okay. So, uh, where do we go for questions here? Marie, did you see any? I, I was just looking. Here. Yeah, I was, I was taking a look and just kind of as a reminder, the download is going to give you those prompts. It's going to give you that walkthrough. So just make sure people are kind of asking, like, how do we get from here to there? Um, go grab that freebie because that's going to be gold. It's exactly what James just talked about. Um, and like Justin said, use the replay, go in there, practice it, set aside some time. Okay. A little challenge for everybody set aside some time on your calendar, you know, at the end of this week, early next week, and, and make this happen in your business. You can absolutely do it. You can make this today if you wanted to, if you had time, um, and so that's kind of just the challenge out there for you guys is to use this content. That's why we bring these guest speakers on, right? Um, that's the biggest thing I know, and I'll speak for Justin because, you know, I can. Um, but the biggest thing for us is, is bringing on really powerful speakers so that you can get the most out of the fact that you have tools for motivation PLR um, and that you're using this inside of your business. We have gone out, done surveys. We know what you're looking for. And those are the people we're bringing on now. So um, just know that we, we love having you here, James, and love having others. I know we've got several other people that have been on. Um, I'm going to pop in the chat as well, just a link to our, um, our YouTube channel because the recordings are on there as well. Lots of great content in there. Um, and I know that as we're having questions and we're kind of coming up to the top of the hour, we might not be able to get to everything. Um, but know the replay is going to be there. I'm going to grab that slide deck that James just shared. I'm going to grab the um, free content. We're going to put it all together and we'll mail it over to you guys um, in, a, in a couple of days as we kind of recap everything. There are lots going on in the chat. Yeah, so, um, James, so I'll, I'll jump back in because I got I got a bit caught up while you were talking. So cool. to address specifically Alexandra's question, could you please explain where do you copy the prompts from step one, step two, et cetera. That's what that the the link to James's page is there. So opt in for that 
get on his list, which will be important, but then that guide will have basically what you need. Um, is that correct, James? Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, usually I'll just make them up as I go, but as I get complex, I use frameworks, I save a sheet for myself, I copy and paste them yep. from the sheet. Yep. Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, the link to the PowerPoint presentation will be included in the replay, unless that's been popped in. I, I, I lost track. Uh, oh, slide deck link is in there. It is. Yeah. yeah. I'll put it, it in it again. In okay. Yeah. So slide deck link. <laughs> we're, we're going, it's a good problem to have, James. The, the chat's I, so busy that we're scrolling up and down yes. to try to keep up. So that's a really good, that's a usually really good. Exactly. Sign. Well, I, I will make sure. So on, on the, the initial email, you're right. Once, once you have to opt in, I'm using convert kit. So once you confirm your address, you get the PowerPoint immediately. What I'll then do is I'll follow up to make sure everybody has access to the literal exact copy paste prompts I used here. Um, so you could kind of just steal them, you know, reword them yourself. And then I'll also have one more time to link to this, the slide deck that I had used as well. So you'll get, yeah, I'll make sure to share it all with you. Why not? Right. My mantra, by the way, literally it's connect, learn, share. I kind of do those three things on everything I've ever done. And I mean that I really do believe that. Um, I learn from other people on YouTube constantly and I just share what I've learned. And so these prompts here, I literally morphed out of Harvard innovation lab and their free series of different stuff. And we're, so I'm sharing it forward for sure. I love that. So good. And I know we share a lot of content. We have a lot of training stuff that's coming in. And James, you are no exception. This has absolutely been amazing. Um, Here's Justin, an amazing comment. Else? I got to Go read this it. comment from Sandra because this, I think, echoes what a lot of people are thinking. Thank you, James, for sharing that. I'm sending you a big virtual hug. This is a business changer. Yay. Virtual that's hug. awesome. That is awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really good. So, uh, yeah, so we'll hang out for a couple more minutes before we stop the recording here. If anybody wants to any, ask any last minute questions, I'll also mention again, for those of you that are tuning in to the recording, as a reminder, the uh, comment section below the video, we, we are keeping up with our YouTube channel. We don't get a ton of action on them, but uh, that means we're going to see your questions. So if you do have, if you're going through this and you're cl clicking pause and you're trying to, you know, repeat some of the steps and it's not working, um, leave a comment and then we'll either I will reply or somebody on the team will reply and we'll get James involved as well. Um, we'll make, make sure you get your questions answered. I was getting a bit distracted there because I realized I didn't put in a proper hyperlink to the slides. So uh, I'll do we'll it. get it. It's all going to be in recording too. And just yeah, as a anyway. reminder, um, we listen to what you all need. So email me, message into the team. We have all kinds of ways that you can contact us and let me know what you're looking for. Cause this is, one of my biggest joys is to find amazing experts. Thankfully, James is, was just a brand new friend of ours. And then he got to be in here two weeks in a row. Um, but, but right now I have people scheduling in through July. So come back every couple of weeks. We'll send you reminders. And this is for you. So let us know if there is a topic you're looking for, something in your business you're struggling with, because I can go find those experts and I'm going to bring them here for you. Um, so just let us know. Uh, message yeah, in. Yeah, or specific name. Too. Specific names, yeah. if you want to make an introduction as well. Marie may probably know them already. She knows seems to know everyone. But if not, yeah. let us know the name. We can certainly reach out. But as you've seen, like we're not just trying to just push content out at you. The, the fact that all of you folks are here live, like we're truly grateful for your time that you're willing to invest that yeah. with us today. It doesn't. This event doesn't happen without you being here live. And again, for those of you on the recording, we understand it is a, for many people a time of day that just doesn't work. But either way, it's that interaction and the fact that we do get the comments and we get the feedback that shows us, yeah, we're going to keep doing this. It's something Marie and I had a had a meeting at the start of the year. We're going to try this training thing. We'll see how it goes. We weren't really sure. It's clearly something that people want. It's working well, and it's making all of us feel like we're learning at a faster rate and implementing at a faster rate, which is key. So again, James, thank you so much. Uh, phenomenal job. Virtual clap. We've, we've done virtual hugs. Yeah, thank you. All that good stuff. I'm going to stop the recording now, but for those of you that are here live, we'll hang around for five more minutes at the end for a little after party. And uh, if you miss out on the recording, show up till the next one live, you can join us. Okay, we'll talk to everybody soon.